Okay, folks. I'm in a preview right now. Hopefully it's working. Um, the system crashed a little bit. This is with the uh, Leica SL2S. And I've been taking some pictures with the uh, 24 to 70 f2.8, the Leicon uh, uh, lens. And I just want to share some information with you. Um, it's excellent. I can just scroll down and show you each picture. But uh, what I'm going to do is just do a slideshow. That way it's a lot easier to uh, explain what's going on. But it's a beautiful morning. I think it was two mornings ago. Um, these are all raw files, which is uh, digital uh, negative, I think. And that's the raw file that uh, Leica uses. And as you can see, uh, the way I use preview um, is that uh, I open up the folder where all the uh, pictures are. I uh, select the first file, then I do a command A, and then when I uh, load the when the program loads up, you know, because I select uh, uh, which file I want to use, which is the preview program. Then it puts everything in uh, numerical order or alphabetical order, the way I selected the file. If you just open up the folder, then it'll choose which files it'll open up first. So the reason why I do it this way is just to show you that everything is in order and there's a point in uh, doing these pictures. So with the biggest camera, the SL2S, I don't know if the SL3 is uh, shipping yet, but uh, full frame, their uh, best camera, well, some say it's the uh, M11P, but, you know, uh, for the bigger lenses and stuff and more light, I consider this a pretty good uh one of the top line cameras because they can record. Only in 4K, the SL3 will do 8K. The uh, Q3 will do 8K, but there's a 30 minute time limit. And I think that's because it's uh, a tiny camera. But uh, as you can see, all the pictures look fantastic. And it's uh, different focal lengths, 24, 70, Tried little things with the uh, um, auto exposure, you know, locking it down here and there. Showing you the different parts where the light is on, light is off, how dark it is. Now with raw files, you'll see the picture rendering. So the first part is basically the JPEG, and then it goes into raw at the finish. And I'll show you that the next uh, uh, clips. So you see, this one is done. This is all shot by the SL2S. Very good pictures. I'm just going to close it right here. I'm going to close that right there. Now I'm going to go into uh, there we go. Open. And I select all of them. And then I open with preview. And there you go. And then what I do here, so I just expand it. So I am just going to uh, go down here. I'm also going to do a command I just to show you uh, what type of file is being rendered. But this is uh, on the Leica Q3, okay? Uh, this is at uh, f1.7. 
at 28 millimeter, the full 16 megabyte uh, file. And I'm just going to scroll down. Okay. Now all these are raw files, all right? So it's bright and then it gets dark. I'm just going to show you a little bit. Look how close. That's what 60 megabytes does, and that's how you can crop. I just keep going, going, going. Now it's starting to break up. You can start seeing noise. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's like that. Anyway, and I'll just keep scrolling down. Well, I, I can even do a far shot just to show you what 60 megabytes can do. That's why I was interested in getting this camera. I didn't want to get the A7C Mark II because that's only a 24 megapixel camera. The A7CR is more I was looking at, but Sony has so many menu options. It, you want a camera that's easy to use and the like is it. Yes, it's expensive. No, it's not for everybody. Okay. Messed up right there. I'm just trying to see. Yeah. So it's breaking apart right there. But still, that's a good image even from that distance right there. And if I go all the way out, I think that's the original. Uh, maybe one more. There we go. I, well, maybe two up. Or maybe I'll just go to the next one. Skip it. But as you can see, all great pictures in focus. There were a few that weren't in focus, and that's because it, either I was moving uh, the camera or uh, the animal was moving. But the majority was uh, a hit. And I'm going to increase this too. And this is at um, 28 millimeter at f1.7. And I'm just going to close it. You don't need to see that. But you can see how sharp it is. And that's something amazing. And then here's the maquette. A little bit out of focus right there. Now that's a shot. That's what I want to show you. Look at that. Look how clear it is. Look at, look at his eyes. Isn't that something? Look at the fur. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I have to get my other mouse. I'm using... Uh, I only got an old Windows mouse. Got to hit there. My mouse is not working. Well, anyway, there you have it. I can go underneath. I forgot I had the scroll bar underneath. But look at that. So this is in focus. This was getting a little bit out of focus. But look at the hairs. So you can get a little bit closer. Just look at this eyeball. You can see like inside of his lens. And guess what? You see somebody in there taking his picture? Let's see if we can increase that a little bit. Go back over here. Yeah, there I am. Isn't that something? 
see a little bit closer. You can barely see me. I, I can see myself and it's starting to pixel right there. But uh, anyway. So these are great shots with a small camera. I've done some video, but I'm not going to show you any of that. I think the SL2S is better on the video. I'm still learning the Leica system. I got most of the menus down pat. I got one of the function buttons for the automatic uh, exposure lock, which makes a difference. And that's it, okay? I'll close that, close this. Now I'm going to go to the one that uh, I'm really interested in. So that, command A, open with, preview. All right, so the first file are DNG files, okay? And I don't need to put the uh, information on the file. I can just explain it to you, okay? So this is a raw file. This is a JPEG. This is what's rendered in the camera, okay? It's in a large format, but if you... Uh, Let's see, I will do a command I, which is it'll tell me the file size, hopefully right there. Maybe. Okay. I was hoping it would tell me the uh, information file. Let's see. No, I don't see it, but, all right, it's much smaller than the uh, raw file. So there's a raw file of this picture and JPEG. Just want to show you the difference that in some pictures the raw looks better and you can always go back and, and uh, make the picture better. But on JPEGs, if you look at it, they look a little bit lighter but still, that's not a bad picture. So the raw file kind of darkens the picture, gives more dynamic uh, contrast or dynamic range, whatever you want to call it. But then there's the JPEG. So you see, the JPEGs are a lot lighter, a lot less information, but they don't look bad. Now, I was, on, um, I was doing the black and white, and it was on the high contrast, and this is on JPEG. So you can now compare it with the raw file to the JPEG shot in black and white. I wanted to show you this also. See, so you can choose to make uh, the raw file black and white also in the menu systems. But you see, this is in color, raw file. And now it's in black and white, JPEG. So that doesn't look bad, it's the same file. Uh, this is where I had the uh, exposure locked on. You don't want anything blown out. And this is black and white. So you can see all the different colors in the different rooms I'm showing you with the raw file. And you can see me in the mirror. You can see the camera I was uh, using to show... Uh, when I was recording the different videos today, or yesterday, I should say, it's early morning.
Now I'm using the macro too. So this is a regular shot. Now I'm in the macro mode. And if you just increase it, Okay, that looks pretty sharp, doesn't it? And this is in black and white. This is uh, Hudson. He was talking about his uh, Q3 and his accessories. I bought some of them. But you can see where uh, raw file is. And then that's a JPEG. That looks a little bit richer, doesn't it? Well, maybe not. Darker blue, lighter. Now, I was a little out of focus right there. Uh, this is my uh, time clock uh, with the uh, temperature reading. And it's the atomic clock uh, type of thing. So it's March 25th, 2 in the afternoon, 78 degrees. So, you know, you, you can see the different colors. Look at the coffee cup on the left. You know, we just... This is the raw file. And then this is the JPEG. So, different renderings. And then you can choose which one you uh, rather have. Now, I think this is cool. All right. So that's the raw file. You see how dark it is? So the picture is more highlighted right there. But when you put in a JPEG, then you get, you know, the shadows and stuff from the light. I, I like it. A little bit better like this. It kind of blends. You don't see the shadow that much. But when you put in JPEG, you see it a little bit better. Now, this is, uh, I started doing the macro, okay? So there's a raw file. And that's the JPEG in macro. So here's my uh, mic for my other uh, Studio 64, JPEG, RAW, Macro. Now, I wanted to show you this because this is a 28 millimeter wide, and I got all four monitors with this lens. That's the other reason why I chose it. It's a fixed lens, all right? You can put it in manual mode. You can do the macro. It's an f1.7, so it's good at night. Uh, it's not like a 1.4, but still, with the 60 megapixel camera, I'm loving it. So you can see two monitors. So the two are left, the one on the left is the LG Ultrafine 5K. The one on the very right is uh, the uh, Apple display, uh, Apple Studio display. They're both 5K. And then the 4K monitors, one on the top or upper left is a 40 inch 4K. And one in the center is the 55 inch 4K. So this is the raw file, and this is the JPEG. So like I said, you can see more dynamic range with the uh, raw file. And these are great shots too, the cat and the dog. So you see, raw, JPEG. Yeah, she does not like looking at the camera. But I thought I'd show you this because this is uh, one of my favorites right here. 
Dusty will look at the camera and, and give you this puzzle look like, what are you doing? But look at that. Look how sharp it is. I'm trying to see if I can see myself in the eye. Now see, it's starting to break up. So I don't know which one is clearer, but go back. Now it's still sharp. Isn't that something? Love it. That's the JPEG. Here's a macro shot of a painting. So you can see uh, the oil on the canvas. Different strokes. That's uh, the JPEG. So here's the raw file. JPEG. So the JPEGs are lighter, less uh, information. The raws have more information. And that's uh, not in macro mode. That's just showing you the whole picture. Raw JPEG. Same thing. Now you can see the oil uh, paint on the gold. I was focusing on the uh, flower pot in this uh, picture. And I turned it uh, in portrait mode. So this is a raw file JPEG. It looks more three dimensional in a raw file, but still. JPEG's not that bad. And then this is uh, out of mac macro mode. Same thing here. Macro. And I think I turn up the light. Yeah, turn up the over light. So that was macro. This is JPEG. That's raw, okay? Now I just backed out. And then, of course, my favorite uh, rock lamp. So I see. That's raw. And this is JPEG. So you have two options to look. And that's at macro, by the way. And that's the end of the file. So I'll just get out of preview. I'll close this off. Okay, no puppy, because I had to shut the door. When they see me up, they want food, and it's too early. Uh, they would love it for me to feed them all day long, and then they'll be overweight, and then I get in trouble with the vet for feeding them too much. So, anyway. This is um, the camera right here, the Q3, all right. You've seen the SL2S. They're both great cameras, okay? They're expensive. But I want something that's small, portable, take great pictures, 60 megapixel, and I don't want to change the lens. I added, uh, I had some filters, and this is a 49 millimeter uh, diameter. So I can use the uh, filters. I think it was uh, Hoya, okay? Or no, it was uh, Pro Optics, I'm sorry. And uh, anyway, they came in with the UV, the ND, and uh, ND2, that is, and then, of course, uh, the higher one. But uh, I can use either the lens hood or I can use the um, just the extender, okay? And I got that in the bag right now. But uh, it's a great camera. Um, it's not as big as uh, the cameras that I've used before, like the Z9, Z8, SL. 2s, you know, that's quite a difference. So, and I do like the tilty screen. Okay. I'm used to the uh, tilty screen. Uh, 
My first uh, mirrorless camera was the A6100, and the tilty screen went up. When I got the Z50, it went down. <laughs> and then I've had ones where it was just a tilt screen, you know, on the Z62, Z72, Z5, even the Z50, all right? But when the ZFC came out and the Z30, they had the flippy screen. Um, of course, the Z8, Z9, they had the tilt screen, but you can move it a little bit, all right? Uh, the ZF, tilty screen. Z63, we don't know. And uh, looks like uh, it's not going to be a stack sensor. Um, Z62, they had like the dual processor. Same thing with the Z72. Uh, BSI is good. They're both BSI, but if you really want the speed, you want a stack sensor. You don't need to have 8K on the Z62, just have it for uh, video. But uh, anyway, uh, this is the camera. This is uh, the pictures that I shared with the SL2S. Great camera. Uh, the filter is on there. It doesn't affect the uh, image quality. I'm just using the strap that came with the Leica. It's good enough for me. I did buy some accessories. Um, I don't really need the thumb grip, but I bought one anyway just to try it out. So you'll see a video on that. Um, I think I'm going to go stealth. So a lot of the accessories, they want the gold cap, the gold... Um, lens cap, the gold, um, you know, uh, hand grip, thumb grip, and then the gold cap, right? I just ordered um, from Amazon, and it's going to be delivered later. But uh, they come in three colors. They come in the gold, silver, and uh, red. I was thinking of just using red here, and then you have a red dot there. But... Uh, I want to stay stealth, so it'll be black, but the hand grip is black also. Um, I paid $99 for the hand grip. I didn't want to pay $230 for the Leica brand. And I didn't want to pay $70 for the soft uh, um, press shutter uh, button. I, I don't know what it's called. But uh, anyway, it's good enough. I bought different ones so I'll try it out and um, basically that's it uh, I've been watching some reviews of uh, people with this camera where they've gotten the original lens hood that was silver you know up the uh, uh, like a Q and then they had the silver and silver and everything looked good all right uh, they used uh, uh, a Netherlands cap that was uh, silver to match that. And uh, it, it's all to save money. But uh, if you buy the whole kit, it's like 600 bucks. So I don't need all that gleam. I want it kind of like underneath the radar where it can go by and take a picture. And I can take the lens cap off. And just do the extended ring, all right? Because I'm going to be walking down sound, you know, downtown in San Antonio. And I might do that tomorrow, but it looks like it's raining. But you see, that's pretty stealthy. Uh, the only thing is uh, the red. But looks like a regular tourist. Is, oh, it's a small camera. No biggie. So I might put some black tape up here, you know, to hide the Leica. But uh, that way, it's staying in stealth mode. I can take macro shots and stuff. 28 millimeters is good. I, I'd say 24, 28, 35. They're all good for macro shots. I've used the 40 before. And uh, I think, uh, you know, whatever you want to use, whatever lens, it's fine. But I like the 28 millimeter. 
uh, focal length, and uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. So uh, anyway, that's with the lens hood off. I can get the extender real quick. Yeah, I'm sorry for rambling on. Um, you know, I, I didn't have an unboxing because uh, so many people have done it. And I bought the Q3 later than most people, about nine, ten months, you know, later. That's when I usually buy stuff is uh, I want to check out to see how the uh, things work out. And if they got all the bugs worked out, then I, you know, go ahead and buy the product. But uh, they have this little bag. I'll just take it out. So instead of uh, using the lens hood, that's kind of, oh, that's kind of square, but it's metal, okay? Um, it's the 49, uh, well, it's a little bit bigger on the outside, but uh, here, for the camera, I'm going to put it in the right side. This is a small lens hood, okay? In fact, the um, filter protrudes uh, the little hood hoodie thing right there. And uh, as you can see, I can't attach it because I got the little lens hood. So I'm going to try it both ways. One with this little bitty thing on for the stealth. I don't, I, I think what it is is kind of like water sealing. So by just removing this, because um, it, you know, it looks like it's sealed here, but just to protect the, uh, the ring, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll, I'll be using both of them. Uh, this is the stealth mode. If I have the lens hood on, then it looks a little bit more like a professional camera. And I'm used to uh, lens hoods. Uh, um, they protect the lens as much as possible. But since it's all built into one, that's why I have a camera strap. Uh, I am looking at other camera straps, but I don't want anything too flashy. If I do have something flashy, I think I'll have the red accents. So they're red there, and then maybe a red uh, uh, strap, you know, kind of like a rope. And uh, either that or the peak design, I got that. But I decided to make everything like a stealth as possible. And uh, I'll put some black electrical tape on here. Take some uh, pictures from downtown, some video at 28 millimeters. And then, of course, as you know, I'll post it up uh, on the YouTube channel. So thank you for watching. This is a ZV-E10, by the way. Uh, this right here is a ZV-E1. Okay. I got the A7C um, in the camera bag. So like the Z7 II, the A7C, and the, Z the other ZV-E10... Uh, like with the Z8 and Z9, uh, and now my ZF, all right, so Peter has the other one, that's going to go back there, and then that one will come off, and I'll be using all these different cameras, uh, like the Canon R6 II, so I got two of those, uh, I got the R8, I got the R10, so all those I'll be going to different areas with the A7C also. Uh, take pictures uh, on the outside and I bring them to the studio with these cameras that stay here all the time. And uh, that way, uh, I don't know why I'm looking over there. I should be talking to here. So, anyway. Like I said, thank you for watching. Remember, stay safe, keep smiling, and until next time, I shall see you then. Goodbye, folks. Have a wonderful day.